2012 HSBC Asian 7 Series was the launching pad for one of the most important years in Asian 7s history. In addition to Hong Kong and London 7s implications, the 2012 series culminated in three teams representing the region in Moscow for the IRB Rugby World Cup 7s. Japan, Hong Kong and the Philippines finished 1-2-3 at the Singapore 7s to qualify for a run alongside the world's best. The results were less than remarkable, but Hong Kong registered a quality win over Portugal in the group stage, and Japan made a run to the bowl final before falling to the hosts, Russia. So, yes, I'm going to go to the World Series, the World Cup, and the World Cup, and the World Cup, and the World Cup. Sagawa will be missing the core of this Singapore Sevens winning side as Japan's version of the Super 15s, the top league, went through a recent expansion, resulting in a number of his top players being drafted into 15s duty. The inability of those players to get released for international sevens has forced Sagawa to temper his expectations early in the 2013 seven season. <laughs> え、マレーシア大会はメンバーが集まって、as Japan prepared to kick off the current season in Malaysia, the bitterness of last year's loss to Hong Kong in Mumbai and resulting failure to qualify for the London Sevens is still palpable. According to Sagawa, there can be no such letdowns this year. So, yes, well, last year, the Chinese Hong Kong Olympics, the Chinese Olympics, didn't come to そしてえ、インドのムンバイ大会でえ、ま、香港に負けてしまったことによってアジアのナンバーワンになることができませんでした。ま、今シーズンは当然え、4つの大会全てにのトーナメントに参加することそしてま、え、ライバル国に全て
reclaim our, our title, if you like, but um, top two finishes is, is for us to try and qualify for the Hong Kong Sevens. For this year's Asian Seven Series, we've, we've obviously built a, a reputation and standards that we want to maintain. Uh, our goal is to, to once again win it. Uh, it's, it's the biggest tournament that we're associated with as a, as a group, so it's important for us to succeed. Malaysia played host to the first event on the 2013 HSBC Asian Seven Series. The series expands to four ranking events this season, and for this tournament, seedings were based on last year's results. Twelve core teams, all in Malaysia for this season's inaugural event, are expected to compete throughout the series. When we come back, the Malaysian Sevens gets underway. The Malaysian capital of Kuala Lumpur played host to the first event on the 2013 HSBC Asian Seven Series. The 2013 season followed the most successful year ever on the Asian circuit, where four different teams qualified for various world competitions based on their 2012 results. Hong Kong, Japan and Chinese Taipei received bids to the Hong Kong Sevens while the Philippines' third place finish at the World Cup Sevens qualifier in Singapore earned them a slot alongside Japan and Hong Kong. Each year now we're seeing growth because more and more countries are playing in more and more events. That's why we're expanding to four ranking events next year to give everybody the opportunity to really play more and more games because as they are playing more and more games, a lot of the countries are stepping up now. Pedaling Jaya Stadium on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur was the site of this year's first Asia Sevens competition. First up in Group A was last year's series winners Hong Kong versus Singapore. Hong Kong was forced to bring a number of new faces into the squad as many of their veterans were in China competing in the national games there. No matter, they had little trouble sprinting past Singapore in the first round win. Group A second seeds Thailand also raced past Singapore, albeit in a slightly less convincing manner, setting up a group decider with Hong Kong. The tournament's top seeds kicked it into a higher gear in the afternoon and had little trouble dispatching Thailand, who still earned a quarterfinal slot with their win over Singapore. Playing without a number of their regular starters mattered little to Hong Kong, who allowed zero points in their two matches while running in 65. Group B kicked off with the host matched up against last year's fourth place finishers China. Worse than Hong Kong, China had roughly 60 of their top players competing in the national games, and it showed. The Malaysians wasted little time asserting themselves in the match, and they ran out easy winners. While Malaysia's win against China was hardly shocking, their 35-14 win over the normally solid Koreans was a surprise. With two group wins from two matches, Malaysia would be a top seed coming into the quarters. That meant that Korea, who had no such national games excuse, would need a win over China to book a quarterfinal slot. While underwhelming in their victory, Korea did enough to move into the winner's round, while China would be relegated to the bowl competition for the first time in recent memory. So Malaysia wins one of its biggest matches since a group round victory over Japan in 2010, and suddenly the hosts are eyeing a semi-final place. Last year's third place finishers, Chinese Taipei, got its 2013 campaign underway against the youthful side from the UAE. The Emiratis were outclassed from the get-go, but certainly made an impression with their level of commitment. Life got no easier for the Emirates as they squared off against recent World Cup entrants, the Philippines, whose experience was no match for the upstarts from the Middle East. 
the Philippines ran out easy winners to set up a Group C decider against Chinese Taipei. Taipei had two surprising third place finishes from three ranking events last year to earn one of the four top seeds to start 2013. But their defense succumbed on the final play of the game and the equalizer propelled the Philippines to the top of the group by virtue of a superior points differential. Playing their first match in the day's worst weather, Singapore Sevens champions Japan had little trouble with Kazakhstan, scoring six unanswered tries in what turned out to be a comfortable opener. Kazakhstan hoped to right the ship in their second match against Sri Lanka, but even without last year's coach Ben Gollings, Sri Lanka had an easy time of it, paving the way for a group decider against top seeds Japan. In the day's final match, Sri Lanka showed no fear as they quickly answered an early Japan try with one of their own. But behind the leadership of Lottie Takiri, Japan calmly regained the upper hand, dotting down another three tries to hold off the feisty Sri Lankans and secure a top spot in Group D. Japan may have been without many of their top players, but a solid win over Sri Lanka bodes well as they head for the knockout stage. With day one coming to a close, we're going to take a short break. When we return, quarter-final action from the Malaysian Sevens. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Petaling Jaya Stadium in Kuala Lumpur, where day two of the Malaysia Sevens started with quarterfinal action. Sevens rugby is improving across the region, and the knockout stages have become much less predictable as a result. With Malaysia lining up against Sri Lanka, can the hosts extend their run into the semis? But first up, Hong Kong and Taipei. Lawa, the new inclusion for Hong Kong. Here's the captain, Jamie Hood. Johnny Rees is in field this time. Flips it back to Hood and he breaks the tackle. So Hood through for the first try of the day. Jamie Hood. Here's Rimini, who's a lovely spiraling pass and juggled on the fingertips by Lee Jones. Oh, he's offside there, but I don't think referee Paul Mackay's seen that. Jamie Hood has a free run to the line. Actually, it was just a couple of metres offside, but uh, Never mind, in the spirit of the game, he'll get the try, Jamie Hood, his second of the match. Unusual the assistant referees didn't pick that one up. Han Chi Siang, no support at the tackle there, so it's a turnover, and it's as easy as you like for Hong Kong to run this try in. Should be Johnny Rees. So good work from Reese. We really wanted to win, wanted to make the semi-final. Um, we played some good sevens, played some width. Um, I think contact area was, was key for us in that game. Second half begins with Rahman, superb kickoff. Aparosa gets underneath it and taps it back, but it's the Sri Lankans sneaking in behind him that reclaim the ball. Oh, that's a lovely piece of play too, flicking it with the back of his foot. And here's Surya Bandara, who seems to have recovered from his knock in the head and away he goes for a try opening the scoring in the second half oh, here's Shahir who takes the line on gets uh, taken a little high gets the Colombo necktie so there'll be a penalty there and uh, maybe a warning I'm not allowed to say that Sir referee Rollins might go for his card no he's just uh, going to keep his hand in his pocket Oh, Jamal Rudin decides he's in line for a try and away he goes too. Irrepressible that far from the line. Amin Jamal Rudin. Back to Sri Lanka. They're just looking for some openings. Marija 
Yui had to get rid of that ball quickly. Surya, now here's some numbers. Three, the Malaysians are coming across in cover. All good work from Marija. In fact, it's uh, Chaturanga who gives a lovely ball to his uh, supporting player. And that could be the winning of the game for Sri Lanka. They'll tick-tock the time down here as well. No hurry. So you know now you're playing Hong Kong in yeah. the semi-final. So the, what, what's it going to take to win that game? Like a uh, lot of heart. So we we're waiting for these games like Japan, Hong Kong to test us how good we are. So we're going to give a fight. Hopefully we can win. Eventually comes for Tunkiri. It's out to Lameki, who has uh, been one of the stars of the tournament so far. And just too easy for Lameki. He's got a lovely body swerve on him. And it was too much for Puang Pan. Just slipping around the outside of him there. <laughs> Wasn't very effective as their fast man on the outside. So they're giving Somayana a chance. Here he is on the flank. Steps nicely inside. And it's Puang Pan again who's left short and defensive duties and Somiyama will score his first try of the tournament to go with his two conversions good scrum from Japan blowing over the ball but uh, Puang Pan manages to get it back to Sisaye knock on there from Thailand so we'll play advantage oh and it's as easy as you like for Ito he scores his first try of the tournament. The difference is just uh, skill level, uh, the rocking skills and uh, scrummaging. Uh, plus, we got uh, physicality in our team. That makes us uh, makes a uh, difference against the uh, Italian. But the Italian they were really nippy, but our defense was uh, really high tough. So we were able to turn over the balls and uh, counter some of the rocks. Han Hun Kyu, Oh Yun Hyun. Good tackle from Everingham. Got him around the ankles eventually. Here's Han Kuk Kyu, who fancies his chances in any physical encounter. Oh, good work there off the back of the ruck from An Sen Hyuk, who used the momentum of the ruck, picked it up nicely, and blew the defence away for his second try. Korea. <laughs> there, Yun. Just passing to nobody, but backing his support to get back and pick that ball up. Young Su Wung does. One of the younger players from the army and the squad. Oh no! It's all gone awry here, and the Philippines will pick up a try. Olgate. So the referee opening play up and playing advantage, probably an advantage that Korea didn't want, quite frankly. Oh. But, uh, Jong defaulting on that pass. But here's some speed down the right-hand flank from Korea. He's got support on the inside as well. Nice little pass to Kang Jinggu, who goes away. This is his first touch of the ball in the tournament. So he's got plenty of fresh legs to pound his way to the line. And that's good work from Korea. The skies opened up in Kuala Lumpur, but not before Korea and Sri Lanka crashed the semi-finals party. Stay with us for more Malaysian Sevens action when we return. The capital of Kuala Lumpur played host to the first event on the 2013 HSBC Asian 7 Series. The semi-final matchups included three of the usual suspects, but Sri Lanka was hoping they could reach their first Asian 7s final. Comes back very cleanly to Marija. He puts his boot on it. He head up. Is after it too, and oh, he's outstripped McQueen here. Isn't this interesting? He, oh, that's brilliant play from Jamie Hood. And uh, Marija 
kicks it ahead and Heraf did so well to keep out of the way of play there. He knew he was in an offside position and he just let Marija, his teammate, pick it up and go over for the try. Houston. This time it's Hood who's playing more of an outside back role. He's so versatile, Hood. Not just in sevens, but fifteens. It's all around the park. Rafe Morrison's on as well, as well as uh, Nick Hewson. He smashed it up nicely. And uh, there'll be advantage here for Hong Kong. Offside play from Sri Lanka. Oh, that's good work from Hong Kong. Going in under the posts. Looks like Josh Peters. Just uh, 30 metres out from his line. Yes, Surya. Oh, he's a snappy little customer. My goodness, he's got some pace and a good swerve too. He's leading Jamie Hood a merry dance and then puts on the accelerator, dives for a great try. What a brilliant individual effort from Sumaria Pandara. And he's really putting his hand up for player of the tournament, that man. Here's Whiteford who really does cut a swathe through the defence once he gets going. Brilliant tackle from here up though. My goodness, the Sri Lankans are playing well, but they've got no answer here. Tom McQueen came through, and I think that was a good play from Kumara. He realised he was in an offside position. Probably would have got yellow carded if he'd tried to tackle Tom McQueen there. Rimanet to Tom McQueen, who uses the referee a bit there as a human shield, and uh, can't make too much ground, though, and real pressure from the... Sri Lankan defence, well, and here's McQueen again, who gets it to Hewson. Hard to stop, this close to the line. And diving is Rafe Morrison, I believe. Good try from the youngster, good backing up. Morrison. Up to Lee Jones. And then they call Squeak, also from the Waikato. Oh, McQueen goes round the blind side. Manages to slip away from the first tackler as well, but gets dragged down. And it falls so nicely for Lee Jones. Here's Lawa. Good strength from Lawa, but he's... Oh, yeah, he's managed to get away from uh, Shamil. He's done a really good job here, too. He's plucked it on. Looks like Dennis Chang is over in the corner. He's just come on. And what better way to ce celebrate the entrance into your game than going over in the corner? I think the conditions sort of level both teams. Um, I think we maybe just wanted it a little bit more at the end. Want to make the final. I've been there before. Want to try and get the win. The second semi final was a matchup between traditional rivals, Japan and Korea. It's Jong to Cho and Su. This is an area where they may have the ability to get round the outside. Thought this might be the case. Cho and Su gets away. Desperate lunge from the Japanese defence. But that's one thing that Japan are lacking. And I said it earlier. Takumi Ito was given a start on the outside. They've also been using Haraki Saito. But neither of them had the pace to compete with Cho and Su. What a boil over this would be if Korea can retain the lead and defeat Japan. Still seven minutes of play ahead of us though, so let's not count our chickens as Lameki finally breaches the defense of Korea. Oh, some great strengths from Lameki. And here's Jamie Henry. We've just seen him come onto the field for the second half and proving the difference between the two teams immediately. It was a great run from Lameki, who just kept his thighs pumping Managed to drive through the tackles, and Henry swooping and timing his run perfectly. And this is good play from Japan. It's Saito who kicks his way through the tackle. Good work from him. Tunkiri picks it up and picks and rolls. Korea in sixes and sevens here. There are numbers. Oh, there's a penalty. Cho and Su. He thought the ball was out, but Japan will want to play on quickly here. And Suzuki. The veteran of the team has the peace of mind to squirt away for the try. They're one man down, but they managed to get a try to get their nose in front. Very heady play there from Suzuki. 
There's a new man on the field. I think it's uh, An Sing Hyuk. Oh, that's a lovely take on his fingertips from Kang. Tries to get around the outside of Saito, but can't manage it. Ball squirts out. Here's Suzuki again. Saito takes the ball on his thigh. Great ball skills from the outside back. And again, some good play from Suzuki, the veteran, the 32-year-old. Wet condition. It's just no, no excuse. Still need to improve on our handling. And uh, there's lots of uh, knock-ons and uh, penalties offside. So we need to improve that on the uh, final, especially against Hong Kong, which are really tough teams, always tough in uh, every year, in uh, Asia 7s. Uh, we hope uh, it's going to be a uh, tight and a uh, good game uh, against them. Can the hosts make it five wins from six matches and scoop up the plate? After the break, it's trophy time at the Malaysian 7s. Don't go away. Asia Sevens has reached the last stage of the tournament, and the first of the trophy matches is the bowl final. Singapore got here with a rousing 15-7 win over the UAE, while Kazakhstan had a relatively easy time in a 36-0 victory over China. So Polyakov gets the ball into the scrum. Good pressure from Singh. I think he's learned a lesson or two over the weekend, Singh. He got really schooled by Jamie Hood from Hong Kong. It was over him like a rash. It's outside to Stiekin and no sign of the injury to take the ball. And a good spin in the tackle of Brian Ng and he's gone over for the first try of the game. Stiekin. In that game, I think we were some of moments we were, we were faster, and in that game we showed our scrum half was very very good, and our wings was very fast in that game, and we are glad to to play in such place like Malaysia, and we were maybe well prepared, better than Singapore, and we maybe we are more more experienced. So Kazakhstan walks off with the first of the trophies as bowl winners in the Malaysian Sevens. Uh. Host Malaysia and their rivals Thailand had wins over Chinese Taipei and the Philippines respectively to reach the plate final. Here's Aparoso, gets it out to Shah here. Always a tough prospect to tackle, a barrel-chested man and Aparosa gets it now inside the 22 Shahi is there out it comes to the back line Asmi who's featured in midfield the last few games Abu Bakar gets it to Ishmael oh beautiful in fact that's Asmi around the outside nice work from Malaysia and they open their account with some good work on the flanks from Asmi Raman who can't get the ball so they've come round offside come quack so Raman will take it quickly here's Asmi the try scorer he sniffs another one can't make it himself but manages to get the ball back oh that's a great try I think it might be Aswad it's a good determined play here from Malaysia between uh, Malaysia and Thailand we got a high spirit he got a big heart to play, so that's why we can beat Thailand in the final of the plate division. A win in the plate final has Malaysia looking to crack the top four in the next series event. Korean rugby is on the rebound, and a top three finish here would be a welcome turn of events. 
So it's O Yun Hyung playing at scrum half. Well, this is Kim Jong Min, and he's certainly an exciting runner with the ball in hand. Good pace from the Korean. And here's Han Hung Kyu as well, another athletic running forward, and he's going to go over in the corner. Han Hung Kyu for the first try of the third and fourth playoff. Korea five, Sri Lanka nil. Oh, nice uh, work there from Kumara, who regathered. So, yes, it's Surya Bandara who's uh, playing the outside role. I think Hera, their star, seems to be not uh, starting. Well, that's good work from Marija, who was in number 10 earlier today. He's kicked it ahead. Has he got enough weight on the kick? Yes, he has. An equaling try there from Fadzil Marija. And uh, that's a good heady play from the standoff. He's been free kicked. This time it's Surya Bandara who fancies his chances with the kick and chase. Park Juan goes uh, back and recovers. But uh, they've towed it on here, Sri Lanka. Well, that's good work from the Sri Lankan who slides over. They've awarded the try. Charged down by the Koreans. It's Kumara who uh, turns on a dime. Gets it to Surya Bandara. It's a challenging kick for the Korean defence too, but they managed to pick it up. Nice work. And oh, Yun Hyung takes it ahead. Oh, nifty step off the right foot too. And uh, they're calling for it out to the right. It's Han Hong Kyu, who really is a hulking, threatening figure in the midfield. Good play here from the Koreans. And Kim Jong Min will use his strength to bump off the defence. Surya Bandara had no answer for Kim Jong Min, who is a very compact runner there. Here's Oh Yun Hyung with the ball now, steps inside but uh, attracts the attention of two defenders. So there's numbers out here on the left for Korea. Cha gets it to Jiong. Has he got support? Can't find it while he hits the ground. So we'll take the ruck. Back it comes to Oh Yun Hyung and he steps inside and he goes under the post to win third position for the Koreans. When we return cup final action between Hong Kong and Japan, stay with us. Welcome back to the Petaling Jaya Stadium. After 27 matches, it's down to Hong Kong and Japan in the cup final of the Malaysia Sevens. So the match we've all been waiting for, the cup final of this HSBC Asian Seven Series, Malaysian leg, Japan, right to left in red, against Hong Kong in the blue. Hood gets the first carry of the game. The captain. Hong Kong have been very measured so far in this tournament. And there's a turnover for Japan. Ozawa, the man from Toyota Verblitz, is playing hooker. Gets good support from Tokiri over the top of the ball. Somiyama, who's playing standoff. That's a great kick that's just slowed down in the slow conditions. Hong Kong get back, and uh, the Hong Kong player's been dived on. That's illegal. So they'll get the penalty. He's not too happy about it either, Whiteford. He's a big enough boy to cope with it, though. Ruminek. He's been a real settling influence on this uh, Hong Kong squad. They've uh, beaten Singapore 22 0. Went outstanding in that game, but certainly did enough. Thailand 43 0. They really put their foot on the pedal there. Chinese Taipei 26 7. And then uh, a very good performance against Sri Lanka in the wet, just using the big men driving hard, 29-12. So it's uh, Morrison to Rimini. 
Whiteford. So here's Tom McQueen. He'll have the pace on these guys on the outside in Japan. It's one thing Japan are missing is a, a guy with genuine speed. Although they've got power as they drove over the ruck there. Oh, Limeki with a beautiful ball. It's fallen in the arms of uh, Ubukata as well. And Lemeke, well, he really is a magician. Sumiyama's had a mixed bag so far in the tournament, but he's got this one. So first blood to Japan in this cup final. It's Sumiyama who will restart play. Goes low and flat to Hood again. Hood decides to put a little chip kick in. Sumiyama's coming over, but that's a clever little kick. Sumiyama's by himself and under a lot of pressure here from Hood, but manages to hold up the ball. Hong Kong drive. It's a held at the back of the ruck. interesting they've got Shota Emi on as well in the forwards uh, who hasn't had much play this uh, tournament. Lottie Takiri who's been one of the linchpins of the team. And Somiyama gets it out wide to Saito who may not have the pace but he's got a good stepping game. He decides to hold on to the ball rather than release it to Lameki. Now Lameki gets a chance down the outside and they're pointing in the direction of the try line. He needs no encouragement. Holds up the ball nicely too under the attentions of the Hong Kong defense. An advantage there. It looked like Hong Kong might have taken a Japanese runner out. So we'll come back for the penalty. Takiri. Takes it quickly and again we see a little chip kick behind the Hong Kong team. Not using the sweeper. Takiri gets the ball and it pops up nicely for Whiteford. And he wanted to play on. No advantage accrued by Paul Mackay, the referee. So this will be interesting here. Yeah, good scrum from Japan. But Hong Kong managed to retain the ball. Whiteford, who's uh, given the duty to drive and carve off a little bit of ground and get some front foot ball going. For guys like uh, Lee Jones. I think that's Rimini at the base of that scrum and Hood again. And in fact, Morrison. Rimini this time puts a big spiraling pass off to Tom McQueen. This could be the moment that Hong Kong are looking for. But good cover there from Japan. Three of them on him, but he stays on his feet enough to give. Uh, the supporting players a chance to get to him. It's a ruck, and uh, the Japanese making life very difficult, slowing the ball down. It's another penalty offside at the ruck from Japan. Ruminet bounces it into touch about seven or eight meters away from the try line. Well done from Ruminet. This is uh, Lee Jones who'll put the ball into this line out. Up they go, and a nice line-out win there. So Rimenet gives it to Whiteford, who runs a lovely straight angle, and he'll have plenty of support here. Hood. Yeah. Morrison is there in support. Hood again. Tries to get around the side of the ruck. He might have been held on to there. Seemed almost glued to the player at the back of that ruck. And good, strong defense from Japan. Now it's Rimenet, who's got Whiteford on his outside. Whiteford pins his ears back. And loses the ball. Takiri recovers for Japan. Somiyama, who always looks a bit nervous with ball in hand under pressure. They've held him up. That could have been a maul. Yes, it was. Good work from Hong Kong. They held him off the ground. He's just a little fella, Somiyama. Well, Whiteford's become all of a sudden a very important cog in this Hong Kong wheel with the weather being the way it is. Performed a brilliant job in the semi-final. Here he is again. Running straight and hard, challenging the Japan defense. This time they're equal to it. It's Tom McQueen out here on the side. Oh, he's done very well to get across. Good strength from McQueen. And uh, the assistant referee has his flag out. So what will we have here? 
counter being foul play on behalf of the Hong Kong player. He had the ball in his hands. It was uh, the attentions of Saito, who I think they'll be looking at. Yep, he's calling one of the members out. I think it's Saito he's having a chat to. Rimini, very important kick, but a tough one. It's flagged away. It's seven points to five to Japan at half time. So with Japan clinging to a two-point lead at the half, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. fans nervously cheer on their side as the second half of the Malaysian sevens final gets underway. This team has done a splendid job in representing Hong Kong over the weekend. So as we saw in the semi-final, Jamie Henry's come on for Japan and instantly makes a difference and uh, gives Saito a chance to scream down the right-hand flank. Again, Hong Kong looking to hold him up. That's brilliant play. Great wet weather rugby. Yeah, collapse mall again. A real lesson there for the Japanese bats. It's a balance, isn't it? If you haven't got the support, you have to stay on your feet. But then if you stay on your feet for too long, the defense get to you. Easier for them to hold you up. And Hong Kong now a couple of times have managed that tactic superbly. So here's a chance for them to attack. It's Hood. Goes off the base of the scrum. Houston. Throws a floppy pass out to Rimini. This is Lawa. Tom McQueen. Now he's got a bit of space. Can we see the gas? Yes, beautiful step off the right hand. Right foot. But does get caught by Ozawa of all people. But he's penalised. So here's uh, Hong Kong taking it quickly. Houston. Oh, and he's mucked it up was just beyond him the pass. He thought about leaving it for a split second. Probably would have been a wise thing to do. Then at just the last second, put that hand out. So a lost opportunity there for Hong Kong. So it looks like Nicole will just have to hold on for a couple of seconds. One man we haven't seen in this game so far is uh, Kasa Suzuki, who had a big part to play in winning the semi-final for Japan. Ubukata filling in at scrum half. A free kick to Hong Kong. Well, this is the chance for Hong Kong. They can sniff it too. Hood gets it out wide. McQueen's uh, on the outside of this chain. Lawa will look to attract some defenders. Does well. Holds it up. They go blindside. No, he flips around Hood. Oh, he's decided to change his mind again. McQueen with a lot of work to do. But, oh, he flips it out nicely. That man could be Rimini. And it is indeed. What great timing from Ben Rimini. Not all over yet though. Ten points to seven, Hong Kong are up. It's anyone's game. And here we go. Here's Henry. He likes to pass though to Lemeki, who's always dangerous. Look at that. Slips a wonderful ball to Ito. Now Ito's got some pace, but he's covered nicely. Steps inside. Still going. And again, Hong Kong try to hold him up. Not quite being able to. So it's uh, Lemeki. He wasn't very happy about the attentions of one of the Hong Kong forwards coming through. Now they're outside at all. Oh, that's a good run too from Japan. Jamie Henry. Well, it's, it's not panic, but there's a sense uh, from Japan that they need to get their own game going. It's Lemeki. Oh, a turnover there. 
Bit of a mix up between Nakashima. So we'll come back, no advantage accruing. He puts in a kick. Was McQueen on side? Yes, says the referee. So they want to try out the legs of McQueen against Ito here. Ito does get back first, and McQueen lets him get to his feet. Wise decision. Well, that's good work, though, from the Japanese. It's uh, Tukiri. He gets taken down eventually by Lawa. Now it's Henry. He's always got a little bit of magic in his bottle, Henry. And this time it's Ubukata. In fact, it was Lameki who went away on attack. Uh, Hong Kong have been penalised here. Could be a yellow card too. Yes, it is. Captain Hood is sent to the Simbin for two minutes, and that's virtually all the time left in this game. Hasn't gone out by the look, so Henry will come back. Chases are, are not coming down as quickly as you'd imagine, but uh, Henry goes to the defensive line and manages to drag his... Oh, again, he's lost the ball in contact. There's a turnover here for Hong Kong. It's McColl. And Suzuki's finally on. That's unusual if he's not carrying an injury that he wasn't used uh, in the first 15 minutes of this game. So Lee Jones from the Waikato in New Zealand gets to put the ball into the line out. The Japan have done well there. I think it was Ozawa who got up. And Japan get the ball. And Kiri to Henry. Here's Lameki, the magic man. Oh, goes under a flying arm from Lawa, and it's Henry. He's got nobody in sight with him. He's just going to stroll through for what could be the winning try. In fact, he gives the ball to Ito. A little bit of risk there, transferring the ball on. It's wet and slippery. But Ito dots down under the post. What a heartbreaker for Hong Kong. Looked like Usain Bolt winning the 100 metres there with his arm fist pumping in the air. And that's the end of the game. Japan have won the first leg of this HSBC Asian 7 series. Thanks uh, boys very much since it's a very young team and uh, still no combination yet in a short uh, period of training. Uh, give a heads off to the boys for giving the hats out. So after the first round of the HSBC Asian 7 series, Japan is right where they hoped they'd be, while Hong Kong is left to rue another last minute defeat in an Asian 7s final. Six tries and an outstanding defensive effort from Japan's Lomano Lemeki earned him most valuable player honours, and Tom McQueen's seven tries over the weekend led all players. As Japan celebrates, we say so long for Malaysia. Be sure and join us next time as the HSBC Asian 7 Series travels to Thailand. MVP.